If you're looking for a whole house battery backup solution, there's a couple of really amazing contenders on the market today. The first one is from Anchor with their F3800 whole house battery backup system. And the other one is from EcoFlow with their new Delta Pro Ultra series. And in this video, we're gonna dive in. We're gonna take a look at the differences between these two. We're gonna figure out which one is best for which situation, what the weaknesses are, what the strengths are of each, and much, much more. So let's jump into it. So in this video, it's gonna be a little bit different. I'm not gonna take the time to show you what all the buttons do and what the apps look like and all those things. And while those features are important, I think it's more important to understand what the core functionality is of each of these solutions and how it compares value to value. And I will have links to both of these solutions in the video description below that you can go and check out whenever you want. So first let's talk about the unique features of each of these other than the power and the max expansion for both of these solutions. Now we will get to those, but first I wanna talk about the unique features that set both of these apart because other than the power capacities, there are some things that you need to consider. So the Anchor Solix F3800 has a long list of features, but feel free to pause the video anytime I have information up on the screen. I do wanna point out that on their website, they do call out RVU specifically. Now that doesn't mean that this is exclusive to RV use. It does mean though that it is designed to be portable. Now I do understand that this channel is top homeowner and not top RVer, uh, but I do wanna bring out the point that uh, if you do have an RV and you're looking for battery backup solution for both of those, then this might be the tipping point for you. I also wanna point out that the Anchor has an AC coupling feature, whereas the EcoFlow doesn't mention that at all. So the AC coupling feature, basically what that means is if you have a home that has solar panels that's connected to both the grid and like solar panels on your roof, then the AC coupling feature will let the power direct automatically between either the solar panels and the battery backup or the grid. As far as the EcoFlow is concerned, some of the unique factors, other than the amount of power it can output and the amount of battery capacity this has, is the fact that it's rated for IP54. So if you're wanting to store this unit outside or maybe in an environment that's not completely weatherproof, then it looks like this is rated to withstand some of those elements. And I wouldn't recommend storing this permanently outside, obviously, but if you do have an environment that's less than ideal, know that this is probably going to be your best choice for that. Another thing I wanna point out is this X cooling technology that they've developed and implemented into the EcoFlow. They say that this will help make sure the unit is cool even under very high discharge loads. So if you are planning on using this battery backup system quite frequently or under a lot of heavy demand, then that's a feature that might be really important for you to consider. And likewise, if you're not planning on drawing a lot of power from your battery backup system, you just wanna have that peace of mind and maybe power a few minor things in case of an outage, then they say that the EcoFlow unit is completely silent under 2000 watts worth of electricity draw. So if silence is very important to you, then this again could be another determining factor. And when it comes to pricing for these solutions, both of the base configurations are fairly similar, but the EcoFlow is going to be more expensive and it does offer more power as well, so that makes sense. I will say though that once you start to expand these systems out to their max capacities, that's when the price difference really starts to become a dramatic shift. So instead of me sharing with you what the pricing is for everything, most likely it's going to be different by the time you watch this video anyway, because both of these companies are known to offer sales quite frequently. So I'm just gonna leave a link in the video description below that you can go and check out, see what the current pricing is for the EcoFlow solution, see what that is for the Anchor solution, and that way you can make a decision that really is best for you at the time. All right, so now let's compare the power output specifications. So for the Anchor Solix F3800, the power output for a single unit is 6,000 watts. Now you can expand that to two units, two of the F3800s, uh, and then that will give you a total of 12,000 watts, and that should be sufficient for most of the needs for backup power for a home. Now we'll dive into those specific details later. I'm gonna show you a comparison about how much power that really is. But for now, just know that these are the specs for the F3800. Another thing I wanna point out is I believe the maximum amount of amps you can draw from an F3800 is 50 amps. And that's not explicitly stated anywhere, at least not that I could find within Anchor's documentation. However, I believe that's the case because that's based on the fact that it has a NEMA 1450 port and those ports will produce 50 amps worth of power. Now comparing that to the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra, which is a mouthful of a name, um, the power output is similar, but it is higher on the EcoFlow. So whereas 
The Anchor was 6,000 watts. The EcoFlow is 7,200 watts, and that's with 30 amps worth of output. You can also add another unit to it like you can with the Anchor, and that will increase and double the output to 14,400 watts and 60 amps worth of power. But with the EcoFlow, you can even stack a third inverter, and that will bring the total power output to 21,600 watts and 90 amps worth of power, which is a tremendous amount of power for a home battery backup system. Now, just to give you an idea of how that translates into a real world situation, on this screen here, I have these different components with average amounts of wattage that they typically tend to draw listed on the screen. So as you can see here, I have a refrigerator, a dishwasher, 10 LED lights, a television, a microwave, and a laptop all running at the same time. And those devices running simultaneously should draw about 3,100 watts of energy. Now, if that isn't enough capacity for you, if you step it up to two units, you can see here in this next scenario, I've got the same amount of devices initially, but I've also added a three ton air conditioner, an electric water heater, and a clothes washer. And again, this would be all of those devices running simultaneously, and you would just need two units of either the Anchor or the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultras in order to accommodate that much energy. This would pretty much top out the Anchor solution because Anchor can provide up to 12,000 watts. So you've got about 1,000 watts of leeway here. But with the EcoFlow, you have an additional 3,400 watts to play with. So that, again, is a significant amount of overhead that you have in addition to the Anchor solution. Now, taking this a step further, if that's still not enough battery backup power for you, if you went with three EcoFlow inverters, these are the numbers that you can expect in terms of performance for your house. So this is an incredible amount of power and it's not typically needed for everyone, but if you do find that you're in a situation where you do need this much power or you would like to have the flexibility to basically run your entire house, even if it's a really large house, if the power goes down, then looking at three inverters from EcoFlow is probably gonna be your only option or it's gonna be one of the few options available to you on the market. And we'll talk about the max power capacity these things have here in a second. But first I wanna cover the recharging options because they're very similar in most cases between the Anchor solution and the one from EcoFlow, but there are some unique differences that I wanna bring out here. So the ways you can recharge the F3800 are through solar power. So if you have roof solar, that is certainly one way that you can recharge this unit. And even if you have solar panels that are based in the yard that are portable, those can hook up to this as well in order to recharge it. You can also recharge these by just plugging them into an AC outlet in your house. The Anchor is unique in that it can be recharged by a car cigarette lighter. Now, I'm not exactly sure the situation where you would want to use this, but do know that it is an option on the Anchor and it's not an option on the EcoFlow. So now if we compare that to the EcoFlow, there are some similarities with the Anchor. Obviously, you're still gonna be able to recharge the EcoFlow with solar panels and you're gonna be able to recharge it from plugging it into an AC outlet. So another option you have to recharge the EcoFlow is you can plug this into an EV pile. So an EV pile is basically one of those things that you can use to recharge an electric vehicle. Um, these can be inside of your house, like in the garage, or it could be outside of your house potentially, or even somewhere else in public where you can recharge a car. So if you have an EV pile and you want to recharge your EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra, then you certainly can do that. EcoFlow also has a dual fuel smart generator that you can use in order to charge uh, the EcoFlow Delta Pro. But basically their smart generator can run off of either gasoline or LP gas. So if you're looking for a portable solution in order to charge or recharge this bank of batteries, then you certainly have that as an option as well. Another thing to point out is they have a multi-charge option, which allows you to charge an EcoFlow from not only just the grid or solar panels, but actually be able to combine both of those and charge one of these units simultaneously and provide up to 8,800 watts of input power into an EcoFlow to be able to recharge the battery banks. Now that's a significant amount of power and it's one of those things that sets it apart, I believe, compared to the Anchor. And I think it's honestly needed because the size of the battery banks that you have with the EcoFlow compared to the Anchor, and while both are significantly large, the EcoFlow far out surpasses it, especially in the maximum configurations. So you wanna be able to you know, recharge those batteries as quickly as you can. As far as total charging time is concerned, I'll put a slide up here that will show the amount of time the manufacturers have stated it should take to recharge one of their units. So as far as the max power capacity is concerned, uh, this is where things can get really kind of fun and a little bit interesting too at the same time. So with the Anchor, you have a max total of power capacity of 53.8 kilowatt hours, which is a huge amount of energy. Now this would require you to have a maximum configuration. So this would be two F3800 units along with six battery banks 
per F or 3,800 unit. So basically a total of 12 additional battery banks. So that's a maximum configuration for the anchor. Now, in addition to having 14 things plugged in together uh, to make this work, you're probably also thinking about, well, how much does all this weigh, which I will cover here in a second. And those are some really interesting numbers too. Now taking a look at the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra, the maximum power output this has is 90 kilowatt hours. So almost double that of what the maximum capacity is from the anchor system. So in order to have this from EcoFlow, basically you're looking at three sets of inverters as well as five battery banks per inverter. Now, this is obviously more than what you would have with the anchor setup. So you're looking at a total of 18 different pieces, but honestly, when you take a look at the way EcoFlow has this set up, it looks like it's a little bit more conjoined and it makes a little bit more sense on a maximum configuration than the anchor does. And the reason I say that is because it looks like everything stacks fairly close together with the EcoFlow solution compared to the Anchor, where it looks like you're just kind of stacking crates on top of each other. The EcoFlow looks a little bit more integrated, but I will say the Anchor solution seems to be set up a little bit more towards portability than it looks like for the EcoFlow solution. So another thing you might be wondering is, well, how long does that translate to in real world power consumption? So like, can I be without power for a day or a couple of days or a week or a year, or like what does it actually mean? So if you take a look at the numbers about the average uh, energy use that homes consume during a blackout, and this is actually information from Anchor's website. So 3.8 kilowatt hours should last roughly a day without power. 26.9 kilowatt hours, which would be one Anchor F3800 unit with six batteries, that would last you about a week without having power. And then with a fully configured uh, Anchor F3800 solution, so it would be two of the F3800s plus 12 battery banks, that would get you that 53.8 kilowatts of power, and it should last you about two weeks. If you take a look at EcoFlow, since their solution maxes out at 90 kilowatt hours, they say that that should last about four weeks or a month in total. And so those numbers tend to line up basically uh, since the EcoFlow solution is about double the capacity of the Anchor solution, that all tends to make sense. As far as how these integrate with your home, both companies offer their own unique solutions that are fairly similar, but there are a couple of differences here as well. So let's talk about those. So with the Anchor Solix F3800, you have the home power panel option. So this will seamlessly integrate your F3800 with grid power for your house and also solar panels if you have them. It'll provide you with backup power for your essential home appliances during outages and it will provide that power automatically as well. As far as the EcoFlow is concerned, they have their smart home panel too. So it's basically the same thing. However, there are a couple of different options here. For one, you can plug up to three inverters into the EcoFlow panel, whereas with the Anchor, again, you're limited to two of the F3800 units. Now, while the EcoFlow doesn't specifically call out AC coupling like Anchor does, they do say that it is compatible with home solar panels and the grid. So it seems like those two features are the same between the different companies. As far as the types of batteries that are used, both Anchor and EcoFlow use a LFP style battery. So that's lithium iron phosphate battery, which is one of the best that you can get. The Anchor is rated up to 3000 charge cycles and the EcoFlow is rated at about 3500 charge cycles. So while those are similar, it looks like the EcoFlow again has a little bit of an advantage compared to Anchor. Now I mentioned weight earlier, and this is one of those things that you really have to pay attention to depending on what your specific requirements are. So if you're looking for portability or if you're looking for a permanent solution, uh, your choices here are probably going to vary quite a bit. So with the Anchor, you're looking at with the F3800, it weighs 132 pounds and it is on casters so you can move it around. Uh, the EcoFlow is on casters as well and actually the EcoFlow has a separate trolley that you can purchase too if you're looking at portability options for it. But as far as the anchor is concerned, it's 132 pounds and then every expansion battery is an additional 72 pounds. So that means if you want to expand that system out to its maximum configuration, then you're looking at a total weight of 1128 pounds, which is quite a bit. So as you're planning out these systems for your house, not only do you wanna make sure you have enough floor space uh, to hold a maximum configuration, if that's what you're going for, but you also wanna make sure that your floor is able to hold all that additional weight as well. So with EcoFlow, the inverter is 70 pounds, and then each of the batteries weighs 116 pounds. So that means for a single unit, so if you're looking at just the inverter and one battery, then you're looking at a total of 186 pounds. So that's significantly heavier than the Anchor solution. While the EcoFlow does offer more battery capacity, um, if you're looking for a portable option, then most likely the Anchor solution is going to get your win versus the EcoFlow because 186 pounds, that's, that's quite a bit of weight to move around uh, quite frequently if that's what your goal is. 
And if you're looking at maxing out your configuration for the EcoFlow, it tops out at 1,950 pounds, which again is significantly more than the Anchor solution. It is twice the battery capacity roughly than Anchor, so that obviously justifies that additional weight, but 1,950 pounds is quite a lot. So if you are looking at a max configuration, again, just be sure that the floor or wherever you're putting the solution in your home can hold that much weight. As far as life expectancy is concerned, both EcoFlow and Anchor offer five-year warranties on their products. Now, while EcoFlow doesn't specifically say how long they expect their product to last, Anchor does say that the F3800 they expect to last for 10 years. So that's something that I would factor on for any battery bank, battery backup solution for your house is about a 10-year life expectancy. Now, I know we covered a lot of information and there's a lot more that we can talk about as well. So in order to help with that and make this video a little bit shorter, I put together a couple of summary slides. So I'll have one up here and I'll put the next one up here. So feel free to pause the video and take a look at these comparisons side by side, again, to help you make the decision that's best for you. So now you might be wondering, well, based on my specific situation, which solution is best? If you still aren't quite sure which one you should go for, then this might be able to help steer you in the right direction. So the Anchor Solix, the strengths are, it has high power output. It can do up to 6,000 watts of power. It can be expanded up to 53.8 kilowatt hours. It is designed for more portability in mind. So if you are looking for something that can move around, it's a lot less weight than the EcoFlow. Both solutions have smart app integration and I haven't really touched on that too much, but just know that both companies offer a smart app where you can monitor how your system is performing over time. And while the Anchor solution can be recharged by solar panels, the EcoFlow solution actually has a higher amount of energy input it can receive from solar panels. So if solar is an important factor for you, then EcoFlow might have the advantage there. As far as the EcoFlow is concerned, it obviously has the highest amount of power output in terms of the maximum watts it can output as well as the maximum capacity it offers and I've also put together this summary slide that can help you identify based off of your own unique use case which solution it's best suited for so I have columns here for both the standard configurations for each of the anchor and the EcoFlow as well as the maximum configurations so this can help guide your decision making process all right hopefully you found this video helpful if you did don't forget to hit the like button and also be sure to check out this other video next I'm sure you'll like it too. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.